This is Tom Mackey, and today I'm going over the top nine foods for blood flow to your arms, to your feet, and to your private areas. And we're starting now. You don't want your foot doctor telling you how to get blood flow to your private areas. But the thing is, what gets blood flow down to your feet actually works a little bit better in areas closer to the heart. So use this information as you will, but I will go over specific studies for that particular problem as well. And hey, my biggest qualification is I have four kids. So the thing is, arteriosclerosis and stress and anxiety, all these things can prevent blood flow down to your extremities. One of the biggest problems in America right now is arterial sclerosis and atherosclerosis. Down to your feet, the blood vessels are called your arteries. They go to your private areas, to your fingertips, and these are surrounded by muscle. These are very thick, strong vessels, but what can happen is as the blood flows through there, it can irritate the walls, scrape them, inflame them, and essentially, as they get damaged, they heal with blood clots, fat can deposit, and they can become more and more narrow, so there's less and less blood flow. There's a lot of great nutrients, and as we talk about the food, we'll go over them, that can dilate and open these vessels. And at the end, I'm going to go over a supplement that's in a lot of these foods that can immediately help improve your blood pressure and increase your blood flow. On that note, I've gone over the best supplements to open up your blood vessels, lower your blood pressure. These are all very related, but these foods can provide a lot of that. And foods are usually the single best way to provide that supplementation. So let's start with the top nine foods. We're gonna count it down and we're gonna include a secret one that you should really consider taking. Number nine, pomegranates. Pomegranates are rich in antioxidants, particularly ones called flavonoids. These promote blood vessel dilation, so flavonoids open up the blood vessels. Studies suggest that regular consumption of pomegranate juice supports healthy blood pressure, attributing to its high potassium and copper levels as well, as well as its low sodium content. Consumption of pomegranate juice can support healthy blood flow pressure due to its low sodium content. But here's the thing, pomegranate juice does have some sugar in it, I'm not a big fan of juices personally because diabetes rates are sky high and diabetes is the single biggest cause of higher blood pressure and kidney issues which then cause high blood pressure and blood flow issues. So maybe eat the actual pomegranate or consider other ways to get your flavonoids in your diet. Number eight, nitric oxide boosters, beets. Beets contain nitrates that are converted into nitric oxide. I love beets. These are like a superfood. And I was born in Poland. We eat borscht soup. So that is essentially a red beet soup. That is one of my favorite meals. You put some pierogi in there. That is unbelievable. That's one of my favorite meals my mom used to make. But this aids in blood vessel relaxation and increased blood flow. You can also take beetroot powder supplementation when timed correctly, can enhance oxygen delivery, benefiting athletic performance, or even bedroom performance, if that's what you need it for. A study in the Journal of Applied Physiology found that beetroot supplementation could improve cycling performance and increase oxygen efficiency. Beetroot is so exciting. There are so many people selling these supplements these days. You can take a look at the benefits here. The dosage, you can either drink the juice or take tablets, but it's really proven for heart health, blood pressure, exercise, antioxidant liver effects. The main side effects are it turns your urine and your stool red. It's got some other minor side effects, but realistically, it's a food that people have eaten since the beginning of time. Studies show 47 different studies at 1,300 patients, excellent blood pressure drop at 3.5 systolic blood pressure, and a further 22 studies I found lowered it 5.1 systolic blood pressure immediately after because you get that daytime effect while you're eating it. So if you're taking it daily, it has even better and almost too good to be true benefits. Seven, berries. Berries such as blueberries, strawberries, and cranberries are rich in polyphenols, particularly anthocyanins, which have significant cardiovascular benefits. Studies have shown that consumption of berries can improve vascular function. This improvement is attributed to the protective role of berries in vascular function, which depends on the time of exposure, the type, the dose of berry. For instance, flow-mediated dilation 
and reactive hyperemia index, markers of vascular reactivity. So that's how much your blood vessels open and release blood flow. Showed improvement following short-term interventions with berries. So essentially, what the studies show is when you eat berries, they open up and there's more blood flow. Other factors such as arterial stiffness reduction were improved over median and long-term intervention. The exact dosages can vary because nobody really regulates the amount of fruit content, but it's important to note that there's a lot of water weight, there's a lot of fiber, there's a lot of good nutrients in berries, and there is a very beneficial role for them in your diet. Number six, quercetin. In onions. Onions, particularly those with higher quercetin content, have been historically used in promoting circulation. Quercetin's mechanisms include reducing oxidative stress, improving endothelial function, and modulating gene expression for better vascular health. Quercetin reduces oxidative stress and improves endothelial function. This is essential for your vascular health. Regular consumption of onions has been shown to be positively impactful for your blood flow. But be careful, they're gonna make you cry. Quercetin is a flavonoid. It's a type of plant pigment in onions. You can also take it as a supplement. It has nitric oxide production ability. That increases the blood flow. It works as an antioxidant. It's usually safe as far as side effects, but it is a blood thinner if you take too much, so just be careful. Number five, garlic. Garlic is rich in allicin. Allicin supports tissue blood flow and cardiovascular health. Optimum allicin activation occurs after chopping garlic. The preference should be given to organic garlic and locally sourced varieties. They've been shown to have higher levels. For optimal benefits, garlic should be chopped or crushed for allicin activation. A study published in the Journal of Nutrition highlights garlic's potential in reducing blood pressure and arterial stiffness. And it's a great home remedy for moms and grandmas. My mom always fed me garlic as a kid, and now I see why. It's actually so well studied for things like blood pressure, but the dose, you can get in an extract or you can just eat it with your food. 600 to 1500 milligrams per day is what's average on the studies. The benefits are heart health, blood pressure, cholesterol, anti-inflammation, the side effects are bad breath and potentially some taste issues. But listen to these studies. 20 trials looking at almost 1,000 people had a blood pressure drop of 5.1 millimeters of mercury systolic. But it gets better. 39 RCTs or randomized control trials on almost 2,300 people lowered cholesterol between 10 to 20%. That almost sounds too good to be true, but take a look at the studies. I got them linked up here. Number four, cayenne pepper and blood circulation. Spices have been known for opening up blood vessels, but capsaicin is a very important one. For my peripheral neuropathy patients too, you can put chili powder or capsaicin on your toes as well, and they hyperactivate your nerves at nighttime, and then your brain signals to it, hey, something weird's going on here, just shut off the nerve function. And in that way, capsaicin can make your peripheral neuropathy symptoms better. But number two, capsaicin and cayenne pepper may dilate blood vessels, improving circulation and reducing pain sensation. Regular consumption of spicy foods like cayenne pepper has been associated with lower rates of cardiovascular disease. Number three, ginger. Ginger has been well studied and is very beneficial in opening up blood vessels. This can be taken as a supplement. It could be taken as a topping. There's a lot of different ways to get your ginger in. I'm going to show you specific studies for all these because I believe you, the viewer, are the best doctor in this world. You care the most about yourself more than any of the elite experts out there. You are in charge. So ginger, a dosage of three grams per day or tea, it can come in a tea form as well. There was a meta-analysis of six human trials that looked at almost 400 people, and they found over eight weeks the blood pressure dropped by about 6.3 millimeters of mercury and about two and a half on the diastolic, which is the bottom number. The side effects are actually pretty low. This It does come in as capsule. It does come in a tea. Tell me if it's working for you. Number two, curcumin, which is found in turmeric. This is one of my favorite supplements. It's an all-natural plant 
from turmeric root, but the active ingredient is called curcumin. Now, when I refer to it, I'm talking about the curcumin dosages because like any plant, they do vary with how much of the active ingredient is in there. Curcumin in turmeric enhances vascular function by doing a few things. It increases nitric oxide availability. It reduces oxidative stress and it improves endothelial function. High quality curcumin supplements with a superior absorption and they do this by adding black pepper, can provide joint and muscle relief as well, as well as thinning the blood flow. So if you're a blood clotting risk, curcumin is actually very effective as a blood thinner as well. And that has been very well studied. This is actually one of the most studied supplements. I have videos going over all the side effects, all the benefits, all the meta-analyses. Check that out below. There are just so many studies on turmeric. That's the crazy part about it. It's so well studied and so well accepted to be safe and effective at this point. It does lower blood pressure in one study with better endothelial cell function. That's the cells in the blood vessels. It's been shown to decrease inflammation of the blood vessels. And because it's an antioxidant, it does reduce oxidative stress. It was actually effective in lowering LDL, which is considered to be the bad cholesterol, and it does increase the levels of HDL, which is considered to be the good cholesterol. In the Journal of Cellular Physiology, it did show in a study that it does prevent the rate of blood clots. Now, this isn't an extreme amount. Even when you take a daily baby aspirin, your rate doesn't go like 1,000 times less. It's really just like a 50% reduction, but there is an increased risk of bleeding if that's a concern or if you're on other medications. Another beneficial study in the Diabetes Care Journal did show in numerous studies that people with turmeric intake did have decreased blood blood sugar compared to a control group. And number one, this is not our secret one, but number one, omega-3 fatty acids from fatty fish. There's actually a lot of ways to get omega-3 fatty acids. Like one way I get it, and for my kids, when I make smoothies at night, I pour chia seeds in there. We love chia seeds. It's a lot of fiber. I can put some flax seeds in there too, but eggs have a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. But here it's fish. You can get it from cold water fish like salmon, but there's a lot of cold water fishes that have omega-3 fatty acids as well. Omega-3 fatty acids are extremely well studied. There's a lot of high level studies. They help arteries, they help the heart, they help decrease inflammation. They also help increase muscle mass if you're strength training. Consumption of fatty fish, chia seeds, flax seeds, farm-raised eggs, these can all help. The American Heart Association recommends eating omega-3 fatty acids at least a few times a week. I would strongly recommend getting it daily. If you can't get it in your diet, definitely consider supplementing it. The costs have come down significantly, making it much more reasonable as manufacturing practices have increased. Omega-3s are so well studied at this point. They did meta-analyses with almost 150,000 people. The dosage is 1.1 grams per day for women and 1.6 grams per day for men. Take it, see if it helps you out. But here's the big secret food. There is something that can dilate your blood vessels right away. And in fact, there are studies that show if you eat this food and this or this supplement, that basically for your private areas, it increases the blood flow within about 30 minutes. It's not as strong as Viagra, for example, but it drops your blood pressure by about five or six points, dilates your blood vessels, increases blood flow to areas almost immediately. This is an all natural nutrient. It's called L-arginine and it's related cousin, L-citrulline. I did a video comparing L-arginine to L-citrulline. L-arginine works almost immediately because it can pass through your stomach lining into your blood. But L-citrulline is absorbed much better, but it takes about half an hour to be converted to L-arginine in your blood. These are both natural amino acids that play a significant role in cardiovascular health. Specifically, they increase nitric oxide production. This is what Viagra and like Cialis do. It's not as strong. That's obviously a perfected medication. But nitric oxide is a vasodilator, meaning it helps relax and opens up blood vessels. It quickly drops your blood pressure and increases blood flow to your periphery. L-arginine is found in red meat, chicken, fish, dairy product, nuts, beans, whole grain, soybeans are good sources. The dosage can vary on the condition being treated, but generally you want about two to three grams 
a couple times per day. In some clinical situations, you could do more, but L-arginine is used for improving blood flow. It works right away, but it isn't as absorbed as good as L-citrulline. Research indicates that L-arginine can improve vascular function, has the potential to help in high blood pressure and type 2 diabetes by dropping that blood pressure immediately. L-citrulline, on the other hand, is a cousin to L-arginine. It's converted through one step in your body, but watermelon is a rich natural source. It also presents in cucumbers and melons. It helps with blood pressure. Three to six grams is very helpful. Watermelon, for example, per cup gets about 250 milligrams. You don't want to eat 10 cups. This is where a, a supplement might make sense, unless you're really crushing cucumbers and watermelons, honeydew melons. It's also present in pumpkins and squash, nuts and legumes. L-citrulline is probably the more stable and beneficial way to go than L-arginine, even though both are great. So L-arginine and citrulline are actually very beneficial as a workout supplement. So when you take it before a workout, it opens up your blood vessels because of the nitric oxide. It helps with protein synthesis, wound healing, anti-inflammatory effects. There's a lot of great studies, but you pretty much have to take it every day. As you take it every day, a meta-analysis showed the results are excellent, like six to seven points in blood pressure drop. So the side effects are actually too low of blood pressure if you take too much, but they're not permanent long-lasting effects. So if you are gonna take it daily and work out with it, it can be unbelievably amazing. Check out my full video on it. And for men especially, it's said to affect sexual performance. So if you don't have Viagra, potentially you could go with L-arginine or L-citrulline. If you wanna compare the two and look at the supplements, check out my reviews on the studies on those below and how they compare to Cialis and Viagra and those. Check that out below.